And then let's go into my presentation. Uh, let's see. It's always a bit of setup before you get started. So I've said that, uh, welcome. Uh, I really, uh, I'm really looking forward to this year and uh, um, seeing you uh, manage the courses. Um, I hope you will do well. I think you will do well. Uh, um, and given the circumstances, I know that you're going to have to work a bit harder than usual, but I know that you're up to the task. Um, we'll just have to make do with the best we can with uh, given the situation. So a few words about me. Um, Michael Swanberg, I'm the program manager, which means that I am, um, if you have any questions about the program, the courses, or need help in getting, getting in touch with a teacher or whatever, then uh, I'm your uh, go-to person. Um, I am Ultimately, I'm responsible for putting together the program, uh, selecting which courses should be part of the program and uh, which courses should be elective and so on. And uh, I talk to uh, different industry partners and make sure that I anchor the contents of the program so that uh, it's the best program possible for um, what they need and what I think you need. Um, I am, um, my research, if I'm, uh, whenever I'm doing research, is in the area of software architectures, or that's where I want to be at least. I do software architectures and I do a bit of requirements engineering uh, and software use, and it all sort of fits together in, uh, in the, that I do empirical research methods and I use those uh, to evaluate different alternatives in terms of software architectures and requirements and uh, so on. My latest pet projects are about software architecture reconstruction, how to take an existing piece of code, a uh, large piece of code, and then automatically reconstruct some sort of uh, architecture based on that. So that's what I do in my spare time. The program, master's program in software engineering. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Um, four semesters. Uh, you're starting the first one now, uh, where will, you will be taking two courses in parallel. And the, the program is always that you take two courses in parallel uh, for half the semester, and then uh, those are done, and then you take two new courses for the second half of the semester. So up until October sometime, October, November, there, thereabouts, you'll be taking two courses, Seminar Series in Software Engineering and Agile and Lean Software Development. Seminar Series started uh, already yesterday, I think, um, and I think Agile and Lean starts on Thursday, tomorrow, no, the day after tomorrow. Um, they're all online this year, for the first semester at least. Um, and then after October, November, thereabouts, uh, you're done with those courses. There are, uh, if there are any exams and so on, you take them there and then you uh, move on to the next pair of courses, the Requirements Engineering course and the Software Architecture and Quality course. These run, uh, continue up until uh, over Christmas and end in early January, second or third week of January, I think is the exam week. And then in spring, we have research methodologies and software testing. And then for the uh, second half of the spring, from March and onwards, I think, it's uh, software metrics. And then you have a choice between uh, decision support systems, mathematical statistics, and social sustainability in product and service development. So you take the one mandatory course, software metrics, for the second half of the spring semester, and then you pick one of those electives. Next year, if we are planning that far ahead. It's uh, um, one mandatory course during the first study period, first half of the uh, autumn semester, evolution and maintenance project, and then your choice among a couple of electives. And for the second half of the autumn semester, it's the software quality management is a mandatory course. And then again, a few elective courses to pick from. And the spring of, what is it, 2022, uh, you'll be doing your master thesis and then you're set and uh, ready to go out and uh, um, uh, work in this wonderful profession. This year, 
as you've noticed, things are different. Um, so during the, this autumn, uh, all of these courses that we offer, the, the first four courses, will be distance courses. Uh, so you'll be able to take them uh, wherever you are. If you already are in Sweden, that's fine and that's wonderful. Uh, I hope we'll be able to meet sometime. Uh, if you're not here already, uh, I know for example that a lot of you had uh, troubles getting the visa in time, which is uh, normal. Uh, the uh, embassies tends to drag their feet a bit. Um, then you basically have all of the autumn semester to get here. Starting in sp the spring semester, um, you have to be here. That's the current guidelines at least. So the current guidelines are that uh, the spring semester will be on campus and you must make sure that you get here in time for, the, uh, for, the, for when the spring semester starts. Um, but up until then, you're uh, free to uh, study from wherever from your home countries, your home cities. If, that's one option by the way, if you have troubles with the internet connection uh, in your hometown, well, you can always move to another town inside the country, right? Where the internet connection is better. Um, we have a web page uh, on BGH where you can stay updated on the latest uh, developments. They t I think they meet every other week, the uh, vice chancellor and uh, his advisory board and decide what guidelines should apply now. So every two weeks or so they uh, revise the situation and make sure that they have up-to-date guidelines on how to behave, which courses should be uh, online and which courses should be on campus and so on, and what should happen with the spring semester. So stay updated and see what the current guidelines are. If you are in Sweden and on campus, there are a few uh, guidelines that uh, we want you to follow, that you keep your distance two meters apart, uh, take personal re responsibility, make sure that you are not the one that uh, uh, um, forces someone else to um, uh, have to come cl too close to you or something, someone else or so on. So make sure that everyone uh, plays together to keep this distance and wash your hands often. Uh, if you feel any symptoms, I'd say, they say COVID-19 related symptoms, but any symptoms uh, these days seems to be COVID-19 symptoms. If you feel that you have a cold or whatever, um, stay at home, uh, try to uh, um, find a different way of doing whatever you were planning to do uh, till you have been symptom free for uh, I think two days is the guidelines from the, the Swedish health authorities. Um, keep track of the, uh, the plans for the different courses you take. If they have any on-campus activities, they shouldn't have this uh, autumn, but if, they, if there are anything then um, um, Follow those things that makes it make sure that you see you're on campus if needed and if not then well uh, you might be there to uh, use the library for example or the group rooms in the library but even so try to uh, um, take responsibility keep your distance and wash your hands. Um, if you are in a particular risk group um, for example I th well, I don't know which uh, are the particular risk groups, uh, but if you if you have any uh, underlying illnesses, for example, then uh, talk to us and we'll try to tailor something which is individual for you. Right, that's so much about the uh, current situation. Now, the student portal. That's the most important uh, web page where you will be going to. Uh, all the information, all the aids that you may need is uh, accessed via the student portal. So if you need uh, uh, any uh, certificates of study or whatever, you'll do that uh, from there. Um, where to f find access to the uh, course pages, Canvas, you do that via the student portal. 
if you want any uh, um, um, apply for a deferment of studies or whatever you do that via the student portal so just uh, anything you may need is uh, accessed via the student portal uh, there's plenty of information about uh, other facilities that, as well as so if you want to have access find out how to get in contact with our IT service department or the library whatever go to the student portal there are links there so that's your starting page uh, this is where you register for courses as well so um, it's a bit of a weird system, but uh, even though you, you've been admitted to the program, uh, you are still being ahead of every study period. You're being offered a place on each course. And you have to go in and say that you accept that place on that course within the program. Uh, so you register on the courses and you do that in the student portal. Um, and only when you've done that, you'll get added to uh, the course home pages on Canvas, uh, so you can follow uh, along with uh, assignments and everything. Um, it's also registering on the courses is not, um, so it's an activity that you have to do in the student portal, and it has nothing to do with what you can see in uh, any other system. So this is where you go to register on the courses, and you must do that. So. If you haven't already registered on the Seminar Series course and the uh, Agile and Lean course, uh, then go into the student portal and make sure that you do that as soon as possible. Canvas is our learning management platform. Uh, this is where you'll find information about each individual course, which lectures there are, any um, material uh, uploaded from the lectures and so on, assignments, you will read the assignments and you will submit the assignments through Canvas. There's also a program homepage, so um, as one of the courses, uh, in the same way as uh, all the other courses, there's also a web page for the program as a whole. Um, we'll find a bit more over overarching information. Um, there are links to schedules. So even though we are offering online classes, the, the, they still, there will still be scheduled lectures. So we do it more or less in the same way. The only thing is that uh, there might not be a room booked for it, but uh, just a Zoom uh, page. So uh, the courses will have schedules and you go into Time edit is the schedule management system that we're using. Um, and you can see uh, there when the lectures are. Uh, they should also be published on each course uh, homepage on Canvas. Uh, I am going to sh briefly show you this as well, just so you can see some of it. So this is the program homepage, and just looks just like any other course. This is in Swedish, but uh, I think you get the gist of it. Um, announcements that I make, I use the discussion page uh, quite a bit. I don't want to spam you with announcements for every little thing. So I use the discussions to uh, muse about things in software engineering, or if you have, if I have announcements about uh, job opening, so <clears throat> whatever, I'll put them there. Um, you'll find on the start page, uh, a few links about, uh, well, discrimination, fire, safety, work environment, and so on. Um, the program syllabus is here uh, somewhere. Uh, and a bunch of other things. Anything useful that I find, uh, I'll put up on this page. One thing I want you to do uh, quite soon on Canvas is that you go into your account and you look at notifications and you verify that uh, these uh, are to your liking. So you register also in your profile, you register your different web, your email addresses and then you decide what you want to have uh, sent to each email address and how often. So uh, one thing which you really want to do is that announcements uh, should be sent more or less directly to uh, at least one of your registered email addresses so that if we have to make changes, last minute changes or anything like that in the course, you get to learn about that as quickly as possible. 
uh, you may want to have a summary of the, whatever discussions have been added to a course and so on. But you, you go through these and uh, make sure that they are to your like, liking, but make sure that you do get announcements at least sent to your email address. Uh, what else is there to say about uh, Canvas? Ah, you'll figure it out after a while. Um, the point is that uh, Canvas will be, alongside with the student portal, will be the website that you'll find most useful because this is where you'll actually be studying. The student portal is where you ad administer your studies. All right, going back to presentation. Um, I also use uh, a, a chat room on Gitter. So uh, whenever I'm working, you can find me there. I mean, you're welcome to send emails, of course, uh, but if you want to uh, just have a quick chat about anything, then uh, I'm um, always online. When I'm online working, I'm available on this chat room uh, on Gitter. Use the, um, I don't know if you need to have um, account on GitHub in order to actually write there, but if you do, then there's uh, an education package that you might want to use uh, when you register there. So, practical things. First of all, as I've talked about already, this is important, so I'll say it again. When you want to participate in a course, you uh, have to register on it. You do that on the student portal. Um, this is in order to participate in teaching, access the Canvas page and so on. And um, also important, um, in order to participate in an examination, if it's a written exam or if it's any assignment or so on, uh, you have to be registered on the course. And that's, again, something that you do on the student portal. So that's the first thing that you have to do for a course is to make sure that you're registered on the course. You can also, if you don't, pass the course the first year, you can re-register for the next year, but you still do that on the student portal. So three weeks into the course, up to three weeks into the course, we are mandated to have a roll call um, for statistical purposes. And if you're a Swedish student, that's how we get paid from the government and so on, is that to make sure that you didn't just register, you actually registered with the intention of actually taking the course. So we have to have a roll call within the course, within three weeks uh, of the course starting. Um, can be done different ways. So each uh, course manager decides by themselves how they want to do this. Sometimes it's as simple as post um, a message on a discussion board. Sometimes it is a particular assignment uh, that is offered early on in the course and you have to submit that assignment. Not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to pass the assignment and because the importance, the point is to make sure that we see who is active in the course, not who is actually successful in the course. Uh, so if you submit those assignments that they say, this assignment is the three week roll call, that should be sufficient for the three week roll call. It's obviously not sufficient to pass the course, but that's another story. Um, since we are doing this online um, this year, there'll be a lot of lecturing online and the headset is very useful because it makes it so much easier to hear what we say and if you sit in a noisy environment and you really want a headset uh, with a microphone as well camera so that you can interact with the teachers and uh, we can see you uh, there is updated guidelines i'll be posting them on uh, the canvas page uh, soon about uh, uh, code of conduct in Zoom meetings. And one of the things that they rec recommend there is that uh, whenever possible, have the camera on uh, so that we can see you when we teach. Uh, it's so much easier than just looking at the list of names and see who is uh, who is actually following along and who's, who understands what we say and who looks puzzled and so on. So if you can, uh, it is recommended that you have the video on when you return to lectures. Um, all times are of course given in uh, Swedish time so when you look at the schedule and they say 10 o'clock for example it's 10 o'clock Swedish time or Central European time uh, so you'll have to translate that to uh, wherever you are uh, in the world um, I would guess that if you go into time edit and export the schedule there um, 
you export it to an ICS file and then you import that into your own personal calendar. I would guess that that would translate the times to your local time, but I haven't of course tried this. But um, when we say a time, it is going to be Swedish time. So be aware of that. Um, you will probably not notice this very much on during online lectures, but there's also a weird tradition here in Sweden that when we say that the lecture starts at 10 o'clock, it actually means 10.15. Uh, and if we mean 10 o'clock, 10, we will say 10 sharp. Um, so that might not be uh, very significant during the autumn, but when spring comes and you're here and you see the schedule and it says that there's a lecture between 10 and 12, it actually means 10.15. Uh, that means that the lecture starts at 10.15, but it also means that you should be in the classroom and, and ready to start the lecture from 10 o'clock sharp. Uh, there's a long story to this uh, about uh, why why it is like that, but the bottom line is if we say 10 o'clock, it's as I say, you're supposed to be there at 10 and the lecture starts at 10.15. Right, other practicalities doesn't really concern you as much uh, now. It will in spring. Um, but uh, I'll put it up here and uh, publish it afterwards uh, anyway, just so uh, we have it all in one place. Um, there's a BTH card, your access card basically. Um, you get that in the uh, reception, I think, the, the, uh, camp the campus reception. Uh, and you use this card in order to get into the buildings. It's a, it's a key card. Uh, you use it as an identity card at campus. If there ex are written examinations, you, uh, you use it to ID that you're a student and so on. Um, if you join the student union, they use it in the same way. And if you use our printers, then you use that to uh, th this card to uh, start your printouts. And it's also the library card and so on. Um, Examinations. This actually does concern you. Uh, so participate in exams, written exams. Uh, you need again to sign up for that uh, exam. So in your in the student portal, uh, a couple of weeks before the exam is scheduled, uh, there will be a, an opening on the student portal saying that well now it's time to register for this and that exam, and then you have to do that in order to participate in the exam. That's because all the exam invigilators and so on is planned based on how many have actually signed up for the exam. So how many rooms do we need? How many exams should we print? If it's printed or if how many computers do we need and so on. Um, so all of that is decided on uh, or planned based on how many have signed up. So if you want to participate in the exam of a course, you need to sign up for it. Every course has a uh, uh, syllabus. There's a course syllabus that decides uh, and regulates what the course is about, what are the learning outcomes of that course, uh, what are the different exercises in the course, uh, what's the, what are the books that you're, are required for this course and so on. Um, so all of this, this is the official um, legal requirement for each course that there should be this brief describing uh, the contents of that course. Uh, in the same way there's a program syllabus. So the program syllabus you can access via the program homepage on Canvas uh, and the course syllabi should be available through each course and they are also searchable I would guess through the student portal. Um, so if you're interested in a course and want to see what it's all about then you look at the course syllabus. Uh, when you start a course, you check the course syllabus and you make sure that, well, this is what I'm supposed to be learning in this course. Uh, and in the end, you should be able to take, the, take this uh, course syllabus and more or less use it as a checklist. Have I learned what they promised me? Uh, so these documents are the important uh, guiding documents for each course and each program. There are 
course evaluations and program evaluations uh, um, ever so often. Um, basically questionnaires that you fill in. The course evaluations are questionnaires that you fill in after you've taken a course. Uh, and the program ev evaluations are at, I think, a, according to a yearly schedule, uh, again, a questionnaire. Please do answer these uh, questionnaires. Do your best in writing what was good with the courses or with the program, what can be improved. And if you have ideas on how to improve something, then please write that as well. We do take these things seriously. We'll read them all and uh, we evaluate the courses based on them and we improve them for next year. So whatever you write in the course syllabi, we do take into account when we plan the course for the next batch of students. Obviously, if there is anything that you think can be improved already in one setting of the course, then raise the issue, talk to the teachers and uh, see if you can't improve it already in the sitting course. This can be, for example, that, well, these lectures are too long or these lectures are too short or we would like more information about this or that or these assignments are not uh, time-wise aligned with uh, when we teach about the things. So you might have a submission, an assignment submission before the lecture has been and then talk to the teachers and quite often we're able to accommodate you. Uh, we want to give the best possible courses and this is our tool, these are our tools to um, get as much information as possible out of you on how, how we teach. So on campus, there's a wireless network, the EduRoam. Um, you get, again, via the student portal, you, you get information how to access that. Um, and if you are in Cascrona and you have a car, then you need to have a parking permit and you pick that up in the university reception. And there's a lot of different functions that uh, uh, at the university available. Um, if you go to the student portal again, there's a uh, there's a page list that lists all of these and a few more, I think. Um, some which might be of more interest to you is the student health service. Uh, so if and they are really good at helping you. So you, especially when you come to Sweden, if you have any ailments, uh, medical emergencies, or whatever, you will talk to them and they can point you in the right direction. Dentist, emergency dentist, for example. Um, this year, I suspect that the therapists will have uh, a bit more to do. So um, um, if you are feeling stressed about the studies or uh, depressed about whatever, then they are there. Uh, and ready to uh, be used by you. Um, if you have different disabilities, for example, if you have dyslexia or something like that, or uh, attention disorder, or whatever, uh, we also have a coordinator for uh, that so that you can um, perhaps get extra time during exams or whatever, so that you have as good a possibility as possible to uh, succeed in your studies. The, the IT help desk will help you with any uh, uh, problems related to your student account uh, or your email account or whatever. Uh, the library, of course, will help you with uh, finding course literature and uh, research articles or whatever you like to, uh, whatever you want. And uh, the international office will help you with uh, anything related to, well, going to, on a student exchange inside uh, or com coming on a student exchange to BTH or going out um, to some other place as a student, as an exchange student. Uh, so you will have those, uh, so they are available as well for you. We have a multi-religion serenity room. I don't think they, it's, uh, uh, should be uh, any particular religion, but it's, uh, it's used by uh, most of our students of, of whatever faith, it's just a quiet room with uh, some, uh, well, actually I've never been there myself, but um, um, it's a room available for prayer and contemplation. Uh, so once you get there, then I know that uh, a lot of students do use that. So that's all the information I have. Um, I am, let's see. 
for the rest of this hour that we planned, I am at your disposal for answering questions. Do use the chat or if you use audio, then uh, use the raise hand f uh, function first uh, so that we uh, don't all start talking at once. Um, once more, welcome to BTH. Uh, I hope we can make this work in the coming year. And um, if not before, then I look forward to meeting you in person in January. So let's stop the share there. I will keep the recording on for a while longer um, in case you have any pertinent questions that uh, are interesting for those that weren't able to join us today. Uh, and then I'll uh, have a few, moment, a few minutes afterwards, uh, after uh, I stopped recording, where I'll answer questions that you might not be comfortable to uh, uh, ask during the recording. So, now the floor is yours. Ah, how to raise hands. There is in the, let's see, participants. Uh, so if you go into participants and uh, there is a more button that uh, should have somewhere a uh, raise hand symbol, I think. Or is it at the bottom? I once knew how to do this. Please do, do, uh, do connect uh, and um, let's talk. Hi, uh, I'm Azhar Rahi, I'm from Pakistan. Hello, and, uh, welcome. Uh, I have, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, I had uh, a question related to courses. Uh, as I can see that there are uh, elective courses which we can do, uh, which we can take in, I think, second and third semester. And yes. uh, I can see that there are some subjects which are of my interest, especially in the third semester. Uh, one is the applied uh, artificial intelligence, one is the machine learning, and the third one is the big data. But the problem is that uh, uh, I think I can uh, take only two elective courses instead of three, right? Mm, that's so right, yes, yes. If, uh, if I want to take the third elective course, uh, what's the possibility? There is, uh, so there is a possibility to study slightly more than the, uh, the scheduled or the planned. So the plan is to take two courses in parallel at all times. Uh, and, I think it is possible to take at least one more course. Uh, you of course have to pay tuition for fees for it and so on. Uh, it's not something that I recommend you doing. Um, these courses do actually require quite a lot of work. Um, so taking two courses in parallel, you are planned for, well, uh, nominally, yeah. uh, Nominally, you're planned for 40 hours per week if you take two courses in parallel. In practice, it's closer to between 55 and 60 hours per week. Yeah. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, as you know, that uh, these, uh, these are very uh, famous in the market. I mean, uh, uh, if you go to the market, they are asking for the developers, for the person who work in the big data and uh, artificial intelligence. So, um, actually, my, my interest was to get admission in the data science, but uh, I could not get the, the admission. So, that's why I was asking that what I have done. So, I, congr I congratulate you then on joining a more uh, versatile program where you can become more than just one thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, I, I see I see the predicament that uh, of course where there are there might be more courses that uh, are interesting than uh, are uh, it's possible for you to take uh, within one study period uh, and 
as I say, there is a certain amount of leeway, but I would suggest that you, uh, for the first semester at least, feel the waters uh, work according to the plan. And mm -hmm. you will notice that it's uh, there isn't that much of a leeway to uh, take on more courses. Uh, so, okay, uh, uh, let's say if I do not feel any interest uh, in the subject after the first semester, so then can I change the course uh, to some other? I mean, like computer science or something. Uh, good question. Um, I'm. I would. And I, I don't have the clear answer to this, but I would think that um, uh, since the programs this year are, uh, all of our programs are uh, full in the sense that we take on uh, as many applicants that we have places and we have actually a few reserves as well, uh, that would mean that if you want to swap to a different program, uh, you uh, would have to basically get at the end of line. Okay. So uh, it's not as simple uh, as uh, just uh, pushing you over to a different program uh, as you think it's. Uh, you have to apply, of course, and um, if you get accepted, you get accepted uh, in some sort of order based on time of application and your grades and so on. Uh, if you do get in to the different program, then of course uh, there might be some courses that you can accredit towards that degree. Uh, but uh, as general rule, it's two separate programs. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And I'm still looking for this race hand feature. There used to be a race a race hand feature, at least. I can't really find it at the moment. Someone has found it. Someone, please. So you had a question there, someone, or? So you have to Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you, yes. Yes, uh, is it the library? It's open. Uh, today I'm going to, to Casa Corona, so I don't know if uh, if it's open or not. The library uh, is open, yes. It's open, so yes. okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. And, uh, and the campus also, it's open. Yes, it's uh, normal weekdays, it's open, uh, and uh, once you get your student card, uh, you can access the, the, the campus uh, on your own as well, even during off okay. hours. Yeah, uh, so, so I can, I can uh, today or tomorrow uh, make the card in campus. You should be able to do that, yes. Okay. You do, you okay. go, once you do get to BTH, uh, you go to the reception. Uh, which is in the uh, round building that looks like a giant bathtub uh, and uh, they can help you with uh, set, uh, sorting the card out for you there. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, Sir Michael. Uh, here is Kamar Zman from Pakistan, one of your uh, BTS scholarship holder candidate. So oh, well I have a question. Uh, my visa is in process right now and it will take a time. So I'm worried about my study. Uh, is it possible for me to uh, get all these educations at the distance learning with effectively? Or uh, what do you think it will be easy for me? Uh, well, I can't say that it's going to be easy. 
uh, it wouldn't be easy even if you were on campus uh, uh, but um, um, it's so all the classes during the entire autumn is offered online so if you just have an internet connection then it's possible for you to attend lectures and uh, so on uh, and work on the assignments and uh, so uh, it's doable uh, so even on campus it would have been a lot of hard work it's going to be slightly more hard work to make this work uh, with motivation and uh, getting the internet connections to work and fi working together with classmates that you've never met uh, ever and so on so it's going to be more work this uh, semester than usual but it's um, it should be possible yes we gave uh, most right. of we gave most of the spring semester uh, as online classes as well, and uh, most of our students passed with flying colors. I'd say I'm really impressed with how they um, they cope with it. Um, so during autumn, it uh, should definitely be possible to follow the, the classes online, and then come spring uh, the current guidelines at least is that you have to make it have to be here in January but um, uh, we'll see how things right. play out I hope uh, visa will be decided uh, before the January so do I so do I I mean you should definitely be able to I mean you're admitted and you can show through your track record in uh, in the coming months that you are a diligent student and that should count in some way to uh, getting the visa proper Okay, so I'll stop the recording now and open the floor to any um, questions that you didn't want recorded. <laughs>